Greetings, it is I, Tentus Narabon Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue my discussion on Werewolf the Apocalypse in the World of Darkness. Last left off, we were talking about what you can spend your experience points on. After, of course, we talked about gaining them, let's finish up with that first today. So I could spend my experience points to increase my rage. Pretty simple on that. Increasing my rage allows me to have more potential uses for said rage, from extra actions to all the other things I can spend rage on. On the flip side, of course, this does mean I have better chance of frenzying. I have more dice to spend on checking if I'm going to frenzy. So, rage is definitely a double-edged sword that you might want to spend your experience points to increase. It has very powerful combat uses, but frenzying, it's a thing to think about. Now, I can also spend my experience to increase my gnosis. Gnosis increasing allows your character to easier step sideways and get some more powerful things connected to your gnosis. So there is great reason to have gnosis, gnosis points and such, more powerful as you go along. So it's another thing that I might want to spend experience on. Now, characters can raise their willpower with experience points. Though the storyteller can also give specific moments, specific time periods, chances for a player to raise their willpower. And should they try to take this opportunity, that can add to some interesting storytelling and adventures that may come about at this opportunity to raise willpower. Usually strange, bizarre, exciting ones that can occur. Now the thing is, you can also lose permanent willpower. We're not talking about the temporary here, we're talking about permanent. If you're really unlucky. Effectively, any time that you're rolling a willpower check and you botch it, you lose a permanent willpower. Now, there is very important connection here when we're talking about willpower and botches that is an exception to this. Because the fact is, you don't roll willpower a lot anyway. So, getting this unlucky roll on one of those rare willpower rolls, low chance. But sometimes you use willpower on gifts. And gifts are the exception. When I am rolling willpower in connection to a gift, even if I botch, I don't lose the permanent willpower. That's botching the gift, not the willpower check. Only on specifically willpower non-gift related checks can I botch it, lose a permanent willpower. So I do have a little safety net when using gifts, at least. So yeah, use that gift requires willpower, not gonna worry about it. Though botching that check will probably still mess up something in relation to that gift, so hey! Now, let's move on because other than experience points, your characters will accumulate renown over the course of their adventures. Renown has both two forms, temporary renown and permanent renown. Renown is a reflection on how well the character is recognized within Garu society, how well you've earned your, well, renown in amongst the other Garu. It kind of forms your place within that society as you gain more of it. Since it is a reflection on how others will see your character, it is traditionally gained throughout the normal events a characters will take, though a character themselves can do things that would seek out renown. They can go in specific missions, quests, adventures that may gain them specific renown. Will it be successful in gaining that one? Well, that's entirely up to that adventure. But they can quest effectively for this renown other than what they gain through their normal events and daily lives. Now, Renown is awarded by a storyteller and awarded in one of three ranks. Glory, Honor, and Wisdom. It is important to note here that should I receive a Glory Renown award for some kind of task I did, it's going to be Glory. I can't exchange it for a Wisdom. Which means, though, maybe my character requires Wisdom to gain the next rank. Well, too bad. I'm getting glory in this case. So I'm just getting a better glory. One that I really didn't need right now, but I can gain it. It can happen. It will be entirely up to the actions you've taken to determine the type of reward you're getting. If you didn't act in a wise matter, why would you get wisdom? If you were in a glorious matter instead, you're going to get glory. It re It's meant to be a reward for what you did if you proved yourself within that renown. 
this is one of the reasons you always want to act within your character concepts, because this directly relates to the amount of renown giving. If you're acting the way that you should be expected to act, it tends to pertain better to gaining renown. So acting within the character concepts you've built out, all the information you put together at when we first built your character will help you gain renown. Now, if two characters are working together to accomplish a, tack, a task, they share the renown. They both kind of split the renown. They would, if they both do something very glorious, they both gain glory. Now let's talk about temporary renown. That's the first thing we have to discuss because you can gain it. You gain temporary renown as you roleplay. Effectively, it's a reward your storyteller will give you over the course of your role-playing. Temporary renown is represented by these squares under your circles of permanent renown. The fact is that your temporary renown can and most likely will go higher than your permanent renown. It will build up. It will keep going kind of up. And as you gain it, you can lose it too, but we're not going to talk about that right now. This is a way for the storyteller to track how your character is progressing in their adventures. One of the ways. And it shows how well you're living up to your auspice, breed, and tribe. I can reflect that you're acting within your character within awarding these temporary renown. Temporary renown is used to gain permanent renown, eventually, when you're filling this up. Other than gaining that permanent renown, Temporary Renown has no in-game effects whatsoever. Now, when a character gains 10 Temporary Renown, they can attempt to gain a Permanent Renown. I'll talk about Permanent Renown in just a minute, but effectively I lose that 10 Temporary Renown I had, and I'm hoping that losing it, I will gain a Permanent Point in that Renown, and then I can start the process all over again of gaining Renown and once I get to 10 again, I can attempt to raise the rank again. Whether again I raise that point in renown or not, we'll talk about that in a second. But every time I get 10, attempting it, pushing it up, gaining more renown. As you continue to gain renown, that is where you begin to gain ranks. Which we will talk about also in a future episode. Now there's a bunch of charts in the book related to glory, honor, and wisdom that tell you renown rewards for completing certain tasks. These are all examples. You don't have to memorize this. You don't have to follow it to a T. You, in fact, don't even have to use it as a reference because circumstances of your game will probably be very different than the circumstances they're defining here. So it's examples that you can use as guidelines as a storyteller to figure out how much renown you should give for these actions. And you don't have to reward renown for any of them. This is just examples. If you feel like your characters did one of these actions, but in such a way that they wouldn't earn reward, renown, don't give it to them. They didn't earn it. On the other hand, if you feel like they should, maybe you give them that reward. Maybe you give them more. Maybe you give them less. It's guidelines, effectively, you're going to use to figure out how much renown to give your players. Now... As I said, you can gain permanent renown, and you do this by gaining 10 in temporary renown. And once I have that, I have to find another Garou. This Garou can't be a member of my pack. That's a very important thing, and they have to be equal to my rank or higher. So there are some requirements for the Garou I'm finding. Then I have them perform the Rite of Accomplishment. Once this is done, the 10 temporary renown I had in whatever the three categories becomes a permanent dot in that same category. So if I had 10 temporary glory, I find a Garou of my rank or higher, not in my pack, get the right of accomplishment. Now I have a permanent glory. I have gained for my actions. Mm -hmm. Now there is another option other than this in order to gain the permanent renown. I can challenge an elder. I can go to an Elder once I have the 10 Temporary Renown in whatever category I'm challenging that Elder in, go to this challenge, compete with them. If I win against that Elder, then I've earned that permanent dot in that one. I lose all the Temporary, for a good example, let's say Wisdom I had, and I gain a permanent dot of Wisdom because I challenged an Elder in a contest of Wisdom. If I lose to that Elder, though... I don't gain the permanent dot, and I lose all the temporary wisdom I had. I have to rebuild that amount of temporary will wisdom in order to do it again. That is why this is the least favorable way of gaining renown, but there are points in time where it's the only option. It might be that you don't have anybody that can perform the rite of accomplishment, 
or in certain situations uh, societally, it might be more appropriate for you to do this rather than the right of accomplishment anyway. So yeah, that'd be an option, but challenging an elder is the way you really should do this. Shadow Lords are a good example of a tribe which particularly aims to do this normally. Now there's a third way I can gain a permanent dot in a renown. It can happen over the course of venture where a storyteller feels it's appropriate. The thing about this one in here is it should be extreme circumstances and incredibly rare when this occurs. Something happens in the course of my venture that my honor my glory, my wisdom were taxed to such a degree that I have proven myself with this very action worthy of this permanent increase in my renown. Without question, without doubt, I have no need to piddle around with rights of accomplishments or challenging elder. Folks would know from what I have just done that this has been earned. And these actions, these times, don't happen very often, but when they do, it's epic storytelling. And of course, as a storyteller, you should reward your character appropriately for such a storytelling moment. But that's it for today. So I finished talking about what you can spend your experience on. Rage, Gnosis, Willpower. And I moved into talking about your renown. What renown is for your character, what it kind of does for you, and gaining both temporary and permanent renown. In the next episode, we're going to move on and talk about losing renown, both temporary and permanent, and advancing your ranks. Because that's an important thing to talk about, too. But I hope you're having a great day. If you have any interesting stories where you gained a lot of renown, whether a permanent point or a big boost of temporary, some kind of interesting adventure, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your stories of your characters, and they seem like some interesting ones to tell, some interesting tales. But... Hope you're having a great day. Remember to check out my Discord and Twitter if you ever want to reach me. My Twitch side if you want to see me some live action, maybe communicate with me there. Or my Patreon for some extra support. And until the next time, I bid you farewell.